All right. So many of you have problems with your spacing. You need to fix that. A couple other things that I've seen. Um, if, let's say, for example, in citations here, just talking about in-text citations, that first of all, let me get in here. So any place that you get information from, you need a citation. Or anytime you make a statement that you, a, a statement, I don't know how to say it, a bold statement, anytime you make a statement, you need to have some type of citation in there. Many of you made very many what I would call assertions. That you would say, a very common statement that I saw in this paper is that uh, most teachers are bad with technology, or most teachers are afraid of technology. Well, in general, that may or may not be true. I've known a lot of teachers that are very comfortable with technology, and so you can't make that kind of assertion without having some citation with it. So there are a whole lot of research journal articles that they have done research that would prove that the majority of teachers are afraid of technology, or this research project demonstrated that the majority of the teachers in this particular school uh, were technology illiterate or whatever. And so you need to find that, and then you could put that in as a reference. Then you can state, make that statement. Okay? What were some of the other ones? I put them in there. What else did you guys have? Oftentimes I put says who in your document. How do you know? Somebody give me an example from your paper. If you don't mind sharing. Uh, integrated technology is the goal of uh, school districts. Everywhere. Okay, integrated technology is the, the goal of school districts everywhere. Okay, well, you can't prove that, or I guess there should be research that should demonstrates that, and you need to cite that. Okay, if you can't cite it, then don't say it, and you need to reword or, or come around a different way. Um, I don't remember if it was in this class. Um, and maybe it just needs to be reworded a little bit. Uh, you could reword it that technology integration in schools is becoming a, a greater and greater priority in our society. That's a general, that's, yes, I would accept that. But to make a blanket statement about every school or every student in the world, you can't do that. Okay? So be careful of those things. So anyways, you find that, and then you, so you have a source, and so you make your statement. If you're using the MLA style of writing, then you would typically put the author's last name with the page number that you got that source from, if you're using MLA. If you're using the APA, you would use the author's last name, and likely the year of the publication, is there a comma in there, in APA? I think there's a comma in there in the APA. There's not a comma in the MLA. So if you use an MLA, you should have just the page number uh, from where you got that. If you're using the M or APA, you should have a comma and the year of the publication. Okay. Uh, if you are using quotes, so let's say this is a quotation. First of all, with quotations, you need to introduce quotations. Okay. You need to let the reader know that you're getting ready to quote somebody here. Uh, many a, a mistake that I see a lot is you just throw a quotation, blammo, right in there, um, just kind of out of the blue. Okay. It's best to introduce the quotation. It's best to give a signal phrase to uh, kind of say, according to Riggler, um, and then quote me. Okay. Or according to uh, the study done, et cetera, et cetera, and then put the quotes. Okay. Uh, that is best. Then when you do that, so let's say I'm using this sentence here, and so I have a quotation here, and then you put a quotation at the end of the, the end of the quote, then your citation, and then the period. Okay, many of you put the period here, or after that, um, and then the citation. The period goes after the citation in both writing styles. Okay? Make sure you line your periods correctly. All right, then, if you're using a quotation, uh, basically the, the standard rule is that if it's 40 or more words, you indent the quote. So in this case, if I was using this whole thing right here as a quote, right there. Okay, so I can go in here and if I highlight all this, I will see down here that it's 44 words long. Okay, so if that's the case, then I need to indent it. So what I would do is I would return here, 
and return at the end of it. And then I take and I would highlight my quotation and then you indent at 0.5 inches. Not at 1, at 0.5 inches. And then when we indent, because it's indented, uh, you no longer put the quotation marks on there. And then in this case, no quotation marks, but when you indent, the citation goes where? Citation goes after the period. Typically, in-text citation, typically when it's just in there, it goes after, it, the period goes after the citation. When you indent, the, period, the citation goes afterward. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay, so quotations with 40 or more words, you want to indent at 0.5. Uh, once again, all of your, your tabs should be um, indented at 0.5 as well. I should have mentioned this at the start. Um, another common mistake that I see is your margins. Your margins should be one inch all the way around. Okay, so check your margins. Uh, in 2007, the default is one inch, so you should be okay there. However, in 2000 and 2003 word, the default was 1.25 on the left and right. So if you just leave uh, the default, your margins will be incorrect. So you want to make sure that you adjust your margins to one inch all around as well. Okay. Um, on the works cited page, make sure everything is double spaced. The second line should be indented. So in the whole works cited page, you could write all your works cited and do this after, but in your works cited page, basically you should come back and move your indent over and then move the top one back so that you have um, left. But it should look like that. The second line should be indented 0.5 inches. Uh, what are a couple mistakes that you made? As I go through these, I, I find a lot of mistakes, and it's nice to be able to communicate, but I forget all the ones that I have. Any ones that formatting errors that you made that you're willing to share? Uh, another common thing that I saw um, is putting quotation marks um, around Let's say if you want to emphasize a particular word, you put a quotation mark around it. Well, you don't do that for the most part. And I think this is where MLA and APA are different. But with an APA, you only put quotation marks around a quotation. So if you wanted to emphasize that technology is a huge, and where you would put quotation marks around huge, uh, whatever, uh, you don't do that. If you want to, you can italicize it to put the emphasis. Uh, the same thing with uh, titles, uh, let's say journal title or any major title. Um, with the APA, at least, you don't put quotations. You would italicize that or underline it. And actually, anymore, they're starting to move away from underlining. I'm not an English person, but they're moving away from the underlining because it, underlining now typically means that it's a link like you see up there. And so um, italicize is basically the typical rule for placing emphasis on a word or for a, identifying a, a, a name of a, a journal article or something like that. I wrote it, I had in my paper where I wrote 21st century, and you oh. either you didn't like the superscript or... No, I don't. Well, and it's not that I don't. <laughs> the MLA people and APA people don't. So, if you write, good, thank you, Ben. Um, if I'm writing in here and I put 21st century, I, Word automatically is going to superscript that, I guess would be a technical word for that. And if you do that, what I'll, and I, you can set up your preferences at, to no longer do that. Uh, basically, all you need to do is after it does that, just hit undo, and it'll fix it, and then continue on. Good question. Capitalization of software names. Capitalization of software names. A smart board uh, is, a, is a, a product name, and so I go to their website to see how do they write it. They write it with capital, all letters of smart are capitalized, and so write it the same. One-to-one, uh, -one, I saw this a lot. Uh, many talked about one-to-one. -one. I don't know. I guess this is my preference, but if you are writing one-to-one, -one, I usually see it written as one uh, hyphenation, I guess, to one like that. Okay, so put hyphens or dashes, I don't know what to put those in between when describing one-to-one. -one. I know we're out of time. One last thing, I know this is a personal essay, um, but try as much as possible not to continually talk in I, 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 uh, or you, 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 that it would be better to um, write in the third person. So instead of 
instead of going through and talking about, I think I could use uh, one-to-one laptops in my, in my class. I think that I could use uh, clickers in the classroom. Go ahead and just say, uh, cl clickers are an excellent technology that can be used in a classroom. This is what it allows you to do. That, uh, instead of writing everything, and there's going to be, in this particular personal philosophy, there's going to be places where you write I, and that's okay. Uh, but try to change, and I tried to highlight that because some of you did that a lot. Uh, try to change that to more of a third person, stating it as facts, using citations. If you talk about clickers, go to the clicker website, reference the clicker website, um, do those types of things.